Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at the alkali metals. These are also known as the group 1 metals. So when we're we looking at group 1 and here I have group 1 down here, you need to know that the reactivity increases as we go down. So things at the bottom of the group are more reactive than things at the top of the group. Conversely, the melting and boiling points increase as you go up the group. So things at the top of the group have a really high melting and boiling point, whereas things at the bottom have um, lower melting and boiling points. The fact that they're in group 1 tells us there is one electron in that outer shell, and this also tells us they're going to form plus 1 ions. And they look like soft, silvery solids. So they're very reactive with water, which is why you'll find them normally stored under um, in an oil situation. And um, when you get them out of the oil, they'll probably be tarnished and brown. And if you cut it, only then would it become um, apparent that it's silvery. And the reason it's stored under oil is because it reacts so violently and so quickly um, that it will react with the water that's in the air around it. So we try and keep it in an air-free environment. So the reaction that actually takes place is alkali metal plus water is going to make metal hydroxide plus hydrogen. Here's an example for you here. We have potassium plus water is going to make potassium hydroxide plus hydrogen. Here's the balanced equation. And you'll notice I put state symbols on all of these. Um, C3 start state symbols are going to come a lot more um, frequent as we move into the more complicated side of chemistry. So you need to know that group 1 metals react with group 7 metals in a 1 to 1 ratio um, to form a salt. Hopefully you should be familiar with this with your previous studies of chemistry. So here we have sodium with 1 electron on its outer shell and chlorine with 7 electrons on its outer shell. And this is ionic bonding between a metal and a non-metal. And what happens is this electron here, this electron here goes over to chlorine. Um, remember that all an atom, an element wants is to have a full outer shell. So the sodium has a full outer shell by losing that electron, and chlorine has a full outer shell by gaining that electron. And because sodium has lost an electron, it gets positive charge, and because chlorine has gained an electron, it gets a negative charge. Okay, this is a bit where it gets slightly tricky, and this is for higher tier students only. This is all about the reactivity and why things get um, more reactive as you go down the group in um, group one. So we have our positive nucleus in here, and we have our electrons with negative charge. And I've drawn in here the electrostatic forces. This is just the positive pull that the nucleus has on the electrons all around it. So the positive nucleus is pulling in all of the electrons around it. And the ones that are closer to the nucleus have more of a pull, um, or feel more of a pull from the nucleus. The ones that are further away are shielded, that's the word they love you to use, by the shells in between them and the nucleus, so feel less of a positive pull in between them. So here's an example that I've drawn for you. We have lithium with two shells and potassium with four shells. You can see that with our positive charge in here, there's not actually a great distance between the positive nucleus and the um, outer electron, which is going to be lost. And there's only one um, there's only one electron shell here doing the shielding. Whereas from the positive charge in the potassium nucleus all the way out to this electron here which is going to be lost there's a much larger distance so this electron feels less pull from the positive nucleus because there is more shielding this is quite a tricky concept to get your head around so if you don't understand it have a think come back and watch this bit of the video again in a few days time and try and get your head around it